What is up everybody? This is Eric V1, the only Yay Area Collector and today I have an interesting game to review. Um, this game has a little bit of a background story with me, you know, but the game that I'm referring to is Brain Lord for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, the SNES. Now this game, this is funny, um, this game was released back in 1994 from the company Produce but it was published by um, Enix which today they are very well known as Square Enix. Um, now this is an action RPG so this is one of those games that, that went under the radar back in the days when it came out. Um, but I have a little bit of an interesting background story involving this game. So um, a long time ago, I was doing the calculation of the year that it came out, which was 1994. Um, that would have made me about 15 years old. I was a teenager at the time, probably like fresh into high school. Um, but I remember that when I bought this game, I bought two games, and this is one of the couple few games that I bought for um, Kmart. As you guys know, Kmart, they're beginning, the stores are beginning to dwindle, and as a matter of fact, they actually visited my local Kmart, which is probably one of the only Kmarts here in the Bay Area. The, the other one I know, I think it's in Hayward, um, but this one's here in Redwood City, so um, I was there at Kmart today, um, which is, believe it or not, where I had originally purchased this game. Along the same time, I purchased that game back, it would have been around 95, would have been 95, 96. It would have been around that time. Um, I bought this game at Kmart along with another game for the Genesis. I bought um, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Genesis version of it. Um, well, I bought these two games because the, the thing that was curious about these games, I want to say that there were open box games that they had. I remember that they had a bin full of open box games and they were going for sale. And um, it came with instructions and everything. It had everything. Like both games had all the instructions and everything, but it just wasn't in their box. So... Um, I went ahead and bought both games. Um, now the Power Ranger game that I that I bought, um, it, it um, I didn't really like the well the Genesis version of Power Rangers is all right. I'm not gonna bash it. It's a cool game, but it didn't really stick out to me. But this one, well, I have a little bit of history with this game. So I bought the game at the time. I thought the game was pretty good, and, and then I gave up on it and never completed it. Um, move fast forward years later, and I tried to complete the game, but then I was playing it on an emulator, and then the emulator, either the, the saves, they crashed or whatever. So I got, I got pissed off about it. Fast forward a little bit later, I played it again, and... Um, and no, actually, hold back a minute. First, I played it in an emulator, but I, I lost interest in it. Then I have played it on the emulator again a few years afterwards, and it crashed on me. And then I said, "Screw it!" I gave up on the game. But it's one of the few because I want to say I've played almost all of the RPGs. I know I've played almost all of the North American RPGs that were released for the Super Nintendo. I probably played a couple of the Japanese ones. Um, I played most of them, I want to say, but not all. And um, and so this is one of the North American games that I was like, damn, I need to pass it, you know, but I never did. Once I began my collection, I remember buying this game and 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 um, it was actually going for rather cheap and I was able to nab it. You know, I wanted it in an auction on eBay. So luckily this weekend, as of the making of this video, this weekend, um, I just passed it, you know. So it, I finally, I feel like I, I accomplished one of the biggest feats in, in my video game um, saga. Um, you know, it, it's one of those things that it felt really good to pass it. Um, but basically what this game's about, it, it's basically an action RPG. Um, they, they compare it similar to Zelda, but no, I want to say, you know, while playing this game, um, when I passed it and I was playing it, this game really reminds me of the Ease games, um, the newer ones, not the older ones, because the older Ease games, you have to ram into enemies and you just attack them. There's no button to attack, 
Whereas once, um, I believe when E6 came out, they or E5, actually the Japanese version, E5, you, you started using an attack, a button to press to attack. And, and with the exception of E3, because E3 is a side scroller, it's, it's more like Zelda 2, that one's more comparable, but uh, more of the overhead view um, ease games. I, I want to say that in East, no, East 4, you still, I don't think you, you attacked in East 4. Maybe you did. But anyway, it says one of those games, I would say by E6, the one that came out in the PlayStation 2, it's more similar to that. Um, but yes, an action RPG, a lot of puzzles, not very diff. The game is hard on its own, but it wasn't, they're not impossible. So... Um, yeah, so this is basically an action RPG. Um, you have five dungeons to explore, five major dungeons. Basically, the story goes, the main character's name is Ramir, uh, but you can name him whatever you want. Uh, Ramir, um, when he was young, his dad left because he wanted to look at the mysteries of a dragon that was attacking the town or to see what was going on about a dragon. So then, um, he left his young son. Years later, the dad never returned, so then the son got a little bit older, and, and he went out to discover the, the whereabouts of his dad, or what happened to his dad, and what's going on with the dragon. So, um, he, he's meet up with, with a, a bunch of other, um, he meets up a, a bunch of other, like, like um, bounty hunters, or other, other adventurers that, that aid him on his quest to, to see what's going on. So, little he discovers that there's more to it than just the dragons that there's some evil presence of course and that's threatening the world one thing that I thought interesting is like there's a lot of references to drag it's funny it's not a dragon warrior or dragon quest game but they give a lot of you know the story it, it feels kinda like you're playing a a um, some sort of a side story to dragon dragon quest or some sort of a of a um, you know, side story to it, but it has no links to it. Um, like, like officially, there's no links to the Dragon Quest games, but you you hear some some kind of mentions where you think and you feel like this game could have been a, a side 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 story to that series, kind of like Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. Uh, for the Final Fantasy games, they're kind of like Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy Mystic Quest is its own side story. I don't think that one has a big um, link to the original Final Fantasy games. Um, but anyways, that's what this game is. Um, yeah, and, and so um, basically that's what you do. So um, I'm going to go ahead and play a quick, um, a quick gameplay of this game because the game tends to be a little bit rather um, it's it's not a hard game it's linear pretty linear but then it gets a little bit difficult and I just, just so you guys can see a little quick gameplay of what it's all about um, you know I did use cheats to pass it unfortunately you know right now I don't have a lot of time to go through and, and grind like I used to um, but again given that the history of what the story of, of what it is with me in this game you know I kinda said better be safe than sorry so I use cheats but you know cuz it tends to get a little bit difficult so let me go ahead I'm gonna do a, a little bit of a quick gameplay of the game and then give you guys my final thoughts about the game so I shall be back in a minute hey what's up everybody so I'm back again I'm gonna go ahead and play the game from the beginning just to see let you guys see a little bit of the game um, I did use cheats right now so that way we can go ahead and um, be able to play the game better so let me see So anyways, this is the start of the of the game. Let me raise the volume a little bit more. Okay. Okay, so let me do from the beginning. As you guys can see, I have a game already. That's like my last thumb save. Let me go ahead and see. Free. And then you get to name your character. Let me see if it'll name him as Ramir. Ramir, there it is. Let me see, is there a way to skip it? 
but I guess there isn't. So as you, guys can, as you guys can see, all these people he's talking to are actually all his friends. They're all the band of, of the mercenaries that are together. Um, so they're all talking about, um, about the dragon. Well, they're friends now, I guess. For some reason, you feel like they've already known each other, but I guess they just met up right there. But they're all friends. All of them are all friends. So you begin You begin in the town of Arx. There's only two villages in this game. Arx and another village called Toronto. Not the one from Canada, but Toronto. And um, basically, basically, those are like the two hubs of the game. So basically, um, as you can see right here, um, if you see the G where it has all that bunch of money, that's your gold. The little red um, dashes right there, they're your life meter. Um, eventually you'll get, you'll get power ups, kind of like a heart, which raises one point into your power meter. And then not only that, but you'll also get like, like um, potions that will raise your, your, your offensive and defensive powers. Um, also your speed, like how fast you move around. Um, that little blank square right there um, in the center of the left part of next to the life meter that tells you the item that you're equipped with. Now, um, B button is used to swing your sword, A is used to jump, Y, y does some actions and X brings, hold on, yeah, X brings up the, the no, I thought it'd bring up the screen, no, I lied. Uh, y does some actions and I think X does something else too or it's not used. The L and R trigger buttons, once you have um, spells, you can select from them. Sorry, I lied. The square is not for power-ups. The square is for your magic. So once you press and hold the attack button when you have magic, it'll release um, a magic shot. So sorry about that. Um, I'm incorrect. But um, I guess the Y and, and X buttons are used to um, equip um, medicines or, or power-ups and stuff. Um, the start button brings up a menu you know certain things in the menu so yeah and then one thing to know is that if you ever get into a puzzle room later on you'll see when you're in a puzzle room if you leave the the, the room and come back in you reset the puzzle so yeah let's get on and there you have it so those are the items you're equipped with um, and then you can only hold um, maximum of a button, only three. You only have three types of slots, each with how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So in each screen is 16. So 16, that's 32. Um, 32, four. so you can only have like about 50 items total. Um, once you pick up more items, you have to either throw them away or use them up. So that's the thing I don't like about the, the game, you know? But it's not, it's not as bad as you think. And um, just um, to let you guys know, my controller for my Retron 5 is really crapping out. 
so I apologize because um, I've been having some difficulties with the controller. But anyways, you want to go inside this house first um, and speak to the old lady here. So you have to go into the attic and defeat the mice. This is kind of like a training, kind of like a begin beginner's training to let you know what's going on. Um, so you can't pick up the chest until you kill everything, watch. See? They're locked until you kill everything. There you go. So the buckler, you want to equip it because this is your shield. Um, you only, that number that says 30, that's how many times you have to, um, before it, it, it dissolves or it goes away. You can only use it 30 times before it breaks down. Oh, sorry. Why? I figured out. Why? Why is to um, hold up your shield and then X is the one to use the items. Now I got the controls. You gotta go kind of find Rowoon in the Tower of Light. And you have to go there first. So... Okay, so the blacksmith. Kind of forgot there a little bit. Blacksmith is here. No. That's where you buy magic. Actually, let's buy some magic. Um, you purchased most of the magic, so... You wanna buy that? Yes, I have the money, so I really don't care. So I just bought everything out from her. Um, I like this one I like. So if you press and hold the attack button, you throw the magic. So you can use them as many times, but typically you'll have a bar below. Yeah, you see the bar right there below the health. So you fill it out and then it, that's how, once it fills up, you can release magic. So there we go. So one thing I kind of dug about this game that I kind of liked was the music. And it reminds me a lot, like I said, of Ease. So, um, it's pretty cool. Oh, but there's one more thing I forgot to do, you guys. Let me, let me go back. Now, there's a, um, there's a, a fairy dealer in, in the hotel. So, you buy these fairies and they, they'll, they'll fly around you, like, kind of like as a, as an aid. Um... So yeah, and those they get to power up. You you get to level up the fairies, but you don't level you don't level up yourself. So let me go up there real quick. Um, I remember it was in this one of these rooms. I think it was this one. Yeah, there it is. So he sells jade jewels, and these jewels hold fairies that, that they get to fly around you. You can equip up to two of them at a time. So let me 
let me buy them all out. I don't care about the names. And whack. <laughs> Maybe he's trying to say that this fairy is whack. But anyways, um, you go to the item screen and then you can equip them. The one I like, I like the one that powers up your strength, the power jade. Um, because you can um, power that one up and then I'm going to open up whack, anger jade. So they attack enemies. So they fly around you. Anyways, now we're ready to go to the tower. Oh, another thing is, um, you may want to buy some tools, um, some that I'll show you right now in a minute. So if you go, is it here? No, it's here. Is this the item shop? No, that's a blacksmith. So you want to go to the item shop. I kind of jumped the gun when I went over. Um... So right here, if you buy, so the items, the general items that you get, either from killing enemies or whatnot, you get an apple which restores a couple of bar points of your health, the cheese restores a little bit more, the, um, one of these herbs, that one heals paralysis when you're kind of like paralyzed limit, uh, for a limited um, while, and then the one that's annoying is when you get poisoned. That's the antidote herb. So you get it to cure poison, and then the blue one uh, raises your defense for a bit, and then the power, the red one uh, raises your your strength a bit. So these are used, and then they run out. Um, the one you want to get that's very important. Um, this is one of the most important items of the of the of the game, which are they're called warp gates. With these, they allow you to travel back to and fro from the city to the tower, and vice versa. In different places of the game so you want to carry a good supply of those um, because if you kind of like you die or whatever um, I didn't buy it because if you die or whatever you're able to go back to town and whatnot so it's really good to carry those and now we're ready to go um, let's see. And when you kill certain enemies, they'll drop these little blue um, orbs. Those are used to power up the fairies. That one that I just picked up kind of gives you energy if you were low on energy. But then what you want to go is you want to go to the side of the place here. And you want to um, go into this house. Inside this house is your first um, heart container to raise your, your bar. So you want to go in here. Go down to the Let me see this I know it's the heart container. Yeah, the heart. And then this one they give you an antidote? Oh crimson yade jade. Okay, so let's see the items. So this heart right here is going to raise your health bar. See, so your HP meter will increase by one. So there you have it. So you need to get those. Um, they're scattered throughout the game. See? 
that that gives them um, experience. You pick up that apple, it'll it'll add it to your item inventory um, thing. They're small apples, so small app apples kind of um, raise your health bar, and then the bigger ones are the actual items. A lot of these guys drop different items. So here's the first tower. So this is what it is. Um, this statue right here saves your game. So it records your saved game. And then you, you see these little plaques throughout the game, and then it kind of gives you um kind of gives you hints and stuff. So I'm just gonna play a little bit through the tower, and then um and then what I'll do um I'll just stop it. Um, but anyways, um a lot of the the whole thing is the whole flow of the game is you go into these rooms and you gotta find key you gotta find keys within the keys. To open up locked doors, backtrack back and forth. So basically, that's how the game is. Um, and then at the end of each um, um, portion of the dungeon, there is a um, a boss that you have to defeat. And then inside this Tower of Light, there's a very, very, very important piece of equipment that's going to be useful um, throughout the game, and that is the X-ray glasses. And what those x-ray glasses do, they allow you to see the map of the dungeon. Um, and, and trust me, you'd want to pick these up. Um, it, it's extremely useful because it'll tell you where to go and, and you'll notice you know, where you need to go in, in the game. Um, and they're located here in, in, the, in the game, in this level. And make sure you touch the statues because not only that, um, the, the, the statues will allow you to warp into that specific statue if you need to get backtrack. So you need to do, okay, here's the first puzzle. Let's see where is the, the puzzle, 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 puzzle. I'm trying to figure it out. Because you have to go, ah, yeah, remember now. You have to go here. Oops. Wrong way. So if you ever mess up in the puzzle rooms, just go back out and come back again and everything resets. So this one is rather simple. So all you do is just move it up and there and it opens the door. See? If you leave the room you can start the puzzle over from the beginning. See if I could try to get the X-ray glasses, and once I get the glasses, I'll I'll, I'll make sure I'll stop it. Um, okay, another puzzle right here. So that's just a spring. So in there is not really necessary. It's a spring that just restores your health. Yeah, so that's a spring. I just remembered. Got this controller. Oops.
an apple. So those guys numb you, so be careful. They're like little mother brains. So basically, you fall into the pit, um, you lose health, and you start the you start at the beginning of the whole um, room. Okay, so I found a key. Trying to remember where those glasses are. Okay, so it's not there, so I can't. So I guess that's the one that used to progress through the game. This is what I'm saying, my controller is kind of whacked out. Um, chain mail. So anyways, I'm actually going to stop it right there. Um, yeah, basically in this level you would have to look for the x-ray glasses which gives you a map of the whole area and it's probably one of the most useful items in the game. So, um, this was a, a little bit of a gameplay of the game, you know, Brain Lord. So, I will go ahead and be back in a minute and give you guys my final thought. So, I'll be back in a minute. Hey, what's up, guys? So, I'm back again. So, that was like a little bit of a gameplay of the game. Sorry, I know it went by a little bit longer than I thought. Kind of wanted to reach the part where I would get the x-ray glasses for the game. But, I know this game tends to be a little bit um, long. So, anyways... Um, that was kind of like the right path to go, but I just wanted to do a quick gameplay of the game. So, what do I think of the game? To me, this is an actual hidden gem for the system. Um, I say this is a must-have for anybody that's collecting for the Super Nintendo, especially RPGs. Um, it, it went, the game, I remember seeing the game a little bit during the time, but it went very under the radar. So it was one of those games that didn't really um, gain a lot of notoriety. So 
Um, yeah, I wish I had the, the instructions and it actually came with maps. And then um, as I was researching the game, it, it juggled my mind that there was a little strategy guide that originally was made for the game that a lot of people say that it would have been a great companion piece for the game. Um, but right now, speaking of prices, as of the making of this video, um, the game will net you about $30 loose. I remember I paid, I think I only paid like 12 bucks for it. So I got really lucky. But um, if you want a complete inbox or if you want a um, something with instructions, that's going to net at least $50 or more. So um, I would consider any game that's above like 50 like I said before, I consider it um, a game too expensive to own, especially for a... Um, for an old school game, you know, I actually think that some of these games are overpriced. However, I understand that the reason why they're overpriced is because they either didn't make too many of them or or whatnot. But um, should I categorize this in the games too expensive to own? I feel like I should, um, but I'll leave that for you guys. But to me, this is a hidden gem. It's a very, very memorable game because um, of the struggles it took me. It took me from 1994, it took me more than 20 years just to complete this game. <laughs> and I finally did it over 20 years of of, um, of being a gamer and all that to finally beat it. You know, I was like, it, it's like a big trophy on my, on my, you know, on my collection. It's like I earned my stripe on this one. Um, but yeah, um, definitely if you guys find this one, Pick it up. You won't be disappointed. It's a fun game. Um, the controls are a little bit kind of, eh, but you know they're not impossible. And the music on the game is really cool. Um, but yeah, it's one of those games that I wish it would have gotten more notoriety, but it didn't. And I understand. You know, it's kind of like I would say that this would have been like a budget title for the system. Um, but maybe not, but you know, yeah, I mean, great game. I highly suggest it. And, um, you know, like I said, it was, um, I've only purchased, um, throughout the, the history of Kmart, Kmart stores. Um, that store is very memorable to me because, you know, as someone that didn't grow up with a lot of money, you know, Kmart is one of the go-to stores nowadays, Kmart. The one locally here in Redwood City tends to be a little bit ex way too expensive. Um, but back in the days, you know, they're the ones who came up with the blue light specials and all that. And, and you know, um, it, it's it's memories, like I've said it before. And, and you know, I, I only, I want to say there's only four, four or five games I remember that I purchased at Kmart. Brain Lord is one. Um, Genesis, the Genesis, this is, I can't even say it. The Genesis version of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Um, Chaos in the Windy City, the Michael Jordan game for the Super Nintendo. That one's a good one, by the way. And there's one more um, that I'm currently playing right now for the PlayStation 3. Um, that one is the Puppeteer. And that one has its own little... Um, have a long, own little special story about that one as well. But that's for another time. Uh, maybe once I beat it in the next couple of weeks, hopefully um, I'm playing. Right now I'm in the limbo of gaming. Um, I'm actually playing several. I know I have, um, I really want to sink my teeth into The Legend of Zelda um, Link's Awakening for the, for the Switch. But I got to beat them old school games that I have. I have a couple. I already beat one that I'm... Um, that I'm planning to do a video, but um, that one I need to beat another game in order for me to make that video. So there's a lot going on, on the way. And plus, now I started reviewing movies and such. So, it, you know, it, and then also have like, I also haven't done Transformer videos. And I want to do, I want to do those too, because that's another thing that's really cool, you know. But anyways, going back to the game, I kind of sidetracked there a little bit. Um, pick it up. You guys find it. It's a great little RPG um, it's worth it. It's fun. So I highly recommend it. But anyways, this is Eric the Bear Collector. Peace out.